also elated to welcome the speaker, Professor Peng Song from Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. So Professor uh, Peng Song uh, did his PhD in National University, Singapore and postdoc at Max Planck Institute of Microstructure Physics with Professor Stuart Parkin. So his research area is on two-dimensional materials and electronic devices, and he has made several breakthroughs and published in top journals. So uh, now I welcome Professor Song. Can you yes, please- hello. Uh, hello, Hi, uh, Professor. Hello. Hello, welcome. nice to see you. Yeah, thank you for your introduction and also your efforts for putting, making all those possible. So uh, maybe let me first share my screen. Yes, please. Uh, hello, uh, can you all see my yeah, screen? Yeah, your screen is visible now, Professor. We can continue. Okay, thank you, thank you. So today I will briefly talk about um, our research here down at NTU Singapore. Uh, as what you mentioned, we're mostly working on 2D materials and particularly 2D spintronic devices. So today I'm going to discuss some of our recent efforts in detecting the detection of 2D magnetic states with spin hole effects. So uh, this is the outline of my talk. First, I will give some very brief uh, introduction and also then I will uh, mainly introduce two parts of the experimental progress. One is the spin hole effect in uh, 2D semi-mental and the other part is how we are going to use the new spin hole material for the purpose of detecting magnetisms in 2D uh, materials. And finally, I will conclude my talk. So, uh, if we look uh, generally overview, have an overview of spintronic research, of course, I guess everyone knows it starts from the discovery of uh, giant magneto resistance in those kind of uh, sandwich structure. So let me use the laser point. Uh, yeah. So, but then after about uh, more than three decades development, if you generally look at the current spintronic research, uh, actually, it still uh, can be described kind of by this kind of triangle. Uh, it all related to creation, detection, and manipulation of spin state. Uh, this is true for fundamental study and also for application. Of course, we, when we talk about spintronic application, uh, most relevantly, uh, are spintronic memory device and also spintronic logic devices for computing purpose. And we, uh, if you want to develop this kind of uh, device, uh, uh, eventually you will need to involve magnetic materials. And uh, once you have those magnetic materials, all you need to do with magnetic material is nothing but to write and read the magnetic state. Of course, you have different uh, methods to do this. And with the uh, recent emergence of uh, 2D magnetic, uh, magnetic materials. This sounds to be uh, uh, even more interesting to look at the, those device applications. So actually, I I believe it is the first speaker of this session already give a quite good uh, background information about 2D magnetic materials. So here I just uh, uh, show some kind of typical or uh, milestone study of uh, 2D magnetic materials like this, the first one, the difference of uh, use uh, when, my, when we go to 2D, now seems we can tune the magnetic properties layer by layer, like what uh, uh, she did here. Actually, this is one of the first uh, studies that demonstrate this kind of uh, magnetisms can sustain uh, down to mono layer without being completely quenched by thermal fluctuation. And also, of course, another one, uh, it can also go to room temperature be, of, for this uh, iron germanium telluride and also being a ferromagnetic metal, which is, can be used for 
uh, I mean, more relevant to uh, some data storage applications. Uh, and also, sorry, this uh, a very recent um, study. So this should be, I guess, I remember should be a nature material study. So similarly, uh, the magnetisms of two those two D materials can also be switched electrically switched. Uh, uh, and this is basically this is a, a basis for magnetic material to serve the data storage uh, purpose. So now it seems that uh, 2D magnetic magnetic materials can do most of the job the 3D ma magnetic materials that has been doing. So actually, what we want to know is is it possible that they can do better in some in some way in some different configurations. So. Uh, to answer these questions, uh, our first, of course, uh, we need still need to combine a magnetic material with a spinhole material. So in our study, our uh, research we start from the sp uh, new spinhole materials. Uh, we, so I guess we I don't need to provide too much background about spinhole effect. Which uh, if I put in a simple word, it just uh, the spin optical coupling in certain materials is strong enough that can generate a kind of equivalent, equivalent spin, uh, spin optical field that can uh, deflect electron with opposite spin towards different direction. So in this way, you can convert a charge current to a spin current and vice versa, that is spin current to a charge current by all utilizing the intrinsic property of material itself without uh, any uh, other assistance for magnetic material or mag magnetic field. So uh, for this kind of uh, spin hole effect, one of the most important parameters, of course, we always uh, care about the efficiency that is uh, evaluated by a parameter so-called spin, spin hole angle. Uh, so in, in this, of course, Typical spin hole materials are mostly heavy metal because it requires strong spin optical coupling. And now, in one of our study, we explored this in a, a low symmetry 2D semi metal, molybdenum ditaurate. So, actually, the way we achieve low symmetry is simple because in, when you have a bulk material, you, you will have this inversion symmetry in the vertical direction. But when you reduce to a few layer thickness, this inversion symmetry is naturally broken. And in this uh, particular case of molybdenum dithyride, let's say if it is a, uh, a bulk material, then you will have both um, so-called Miller and Grant Miller symmetry. But when you have this uh, layer symmetry, as uh, layer structure uh, with a few layer thickness, of course, not necessarily going to mono layer, uh, a few layer will do this job. Uh, so now in this case, only this mirror symmetry is uh, maintained, but this grad mirror basically is a mirror plus uh, inversion symmetry is broken uh, because of the broken of inversion symmetry. So uh, then we found that the impact of this symmetry broken is actually quite profound in terms of spin hole effect. Of course, the way we study spin hole effect is by using magnetic transport measurement on um, micro micro scale device we fabricated with e, uh, electron beam lithography, a scheme a schematics like this. Basically, we can use this kind of non local configuration to detect the spin hole effect. And of course, in this configuration, the, we still use cobalt, but here cobalt is nothing about spin generation or detection. It, it is only serve as a kind of spin regulator which can control the interaction between cobalt and the spin polarization in molybdenum dithyride. Right? So in this way, we can separate the signal from spin hole effect and, and other non-spin related effects. So uh, this detailed uh, mechanism or detailed physical picture is uh, like this. So basically when the magnetization of this cobalt uh, is, uh, perpendicular to the spin polarization, then they will have a largest exchange interaction due to uh, spin transfer torque. 
then in this case, only minimum spin current can pass this cobalt and that is being detected by this non-local voltage block. While if we switch the magnetization of cobalt by an external magnetic field from this key in plane to out of plane, that is to make the magnetization and spin polarization parallel. Then they become uh, a collinear in a collinear configuration and the interaction between them will become a uh, uh, minimum. So in this configuration, we will have most spin current being detected by the uh, non-local voltage probe. Uh, that is to say the difference of these two configuration uh, largely represented the signal generated due to spin core effects. So uh, when we look at the data, basically case, the data uh, that is straightforward, straightforward and much matches quite well with the physical picture I just described. So without magnetic field, then uh, it is uh, actually it should be in this configuration. And when we apply large field, then it will be uh, switched to this configuration. Meaning so uh, by increasing the magnetic field, the signal due to spin hole effect will gradually increase and at a certain point will become saturated because of the magnetization is saturated. So, and of course we can do some kind of some other uh, typical measurement like this lens dependent measurement. Here lens is just the distance between the injector and detector. So by varying this kind of parameters, we can quantify the spin hole angle and also spin diffusion lens. And the, of course the value we got for this material 2D molybdenum data, right? Spin hole angle is about 30% and spin diffusion lens is about two micrometers. So if you put these two value in this graph, so kind of benchmark with what uh, other typical spin hole materials, you will find that the spin hole effect in this material somehow achieve a very good balance between spin hole angle and spin diffusion lens. While all those other, let's say, let's say traditional spin hole materials, so always for always this kind of a trade-off between these two parameters. Basically, they follow this trend. Only one parameter can be large, another will be extremely small. So of course, uh, our understanding for this is that uh, by reducing the symmetry in these materials, actually the spin orbital field become asymmetric instead of symmetric. Asymmetric many meaning there will be an additional out of plane spin orbital field that can be used kind of maintain the spin polarization that is generated by spin hole effect. While traditionally the spin uh, hole, the spin orbital coupling that generated spin current and defacing spin current is exactly the same. Meaning uh, if it is too strong, it can have a large spin hole angle, but then it will quickly uh, defacing spin current, meaning you have a spin, well, short spin diffusion lens. So this is our, of course, the, I, uh, I would say, I must admit, this is still a preliminary understanding about this uh, uh, unique behavior. Of course, uh, of course, at the same time, that means there's still a lot to understand this kind of uh, special spin hole effects in those no, uh, low symmetry materials. So the second part I will discuss how we can use the uh, spin hole effect in particular still in molybdenum data right to detect 2D magnetisms. So of course, uh, when we talk about detection of two magnetisms, it can be measured by magneto resistance. It can be measured by hole effect different ways. But of course, uh, if, because eventually we want to deal with nanomagnet, for those kind of uh, measurement like uh, magneto resistance measurement, the energy consumption will be uh, dramatically increased when you measure nanomagnet because of the resistance basically inversely proportional to the uh, size of your magnet. So 
keep uh, if we use spin hole effect to do the job, then likely we can have a more energy efficient way to uh, detect magnetisms. And the way we do this is uh, described by this schematics. Basically, we will, uh, we, of course, we still have this, uh, we choose to use this ion germanium telluride. Uh, this so far, uh, I would say, uh, one of the most typical 2D ferromagnetic ferromagnetic metal. So we, we choose this one as a demo. So ion germanium telluride, then we can have both configurations. So what we call local readout and non-local uh, readout. The local readout means the spin, uh, the detection happens exactly at the place of FGT. Well, the non-local readout means uh, there's a spin diffusion between these two. Uh, the detection happens some way, uh, some distance away from the magnetic magnetic material itself. So, and of course, in this way, uh, because of the different magnetization, the spin hole effect will generate opposite signal. Uh, uh, ideally, one is positive, one is negative, like. Uh, described in this cartoon. So, and in this way, we can generate it or measure two resistance state that correspond to the magnetized, uh, object magnetization of FGT. Uh, this is idea how we use spin hole effect to, de uh, to detect the uh, mag magnetisms in FGT. So, of course, another unique uh, feature in this system is that now, at the interface, this FGT and molybdenum tetra is purely one watt interface. And with those kind of one watt interface, we can eliminate a lot of spin defacing channel, uh, such as defects, miss, uh, um, interpenetration, and, and also some even crystal defects. So in this way, uh, likely we can have a much more efficient uh, interface for spin transport or spin transfer. Actually, this is also one of the reasons uh, why we can achieve quite remarkable efficiency as I will show below. So next, I will basically discuss these two configurations separately. So the first one for the uh, non-local spin radar. So now we, so uh, you can, uh, tell from this configuration, basically, uh, when we apply a current between these two, now the FGT will inject a spin polarized current into molybdenum dithyride. And the, then the spin hole effect in molybdenum dithyride can convert the charged spin current injected from FGT into a charged current, which can be detected as a, a non local voltage when. You use this kind of configuration. So this is a, a physical feature underlying this uh, schematics. And of course, uh, in our study, we mostly working with exfoliated 2D materials. So the device will look like this. Uh, we use those uh, micro scale flakes obtained by mechanical exfoliation and then make this kind of high quality header structure. Well, for the measurement, if you look at the data, then you, the most uh, distinctive, distinctive feature is this hysteresis loop. So basically, you will find that when we uh, switch the magnetization of FGT, you will see a, a, a abrupt change in the non-local resistance or non-local voltage. Of course, then uh, you, overall, what you got is this kind of hysteresis loop which uh, looks uh, quite similar to the alarmless hole effect of FGT itself. But of course, we know here we are not measuring FGT. Actually, it is due to the uh, spin hole effect in MOT2, so in molybdenum dithyride itself. And of course, we can have some other uh, kind of control measurement to be more uh, affirmative about this uh, SHE mechanism, such as when, if we switch the direction or reverse the direction of injection column, then we can have a reversed signal. 
also actually this basically this uh non local voltage is linearly uh li to the linear to the injection current meaning it is a first order effect we are not measuring uh, any significant therm or thermal effect or, uh, or others and so with this system you can see uh, actually you can see that the distance between these can be up to almost up to two micrometers which is a remarkable long distance if you compare with other let's say the heavy metal platinum so uh, because of the uh, unique spin hole effect and long spin diffusion lens in molybdenum dielectric we can achieve this kind of long range non local layout of magnetic materials and of course here uh, the operation temperature in our study will be below 200 k but this is only limited by the, the tc of fgd itself meaning if we change to some other 2d magnetic material with tc above room temperature we can reproduce all those data at room temperature or even above so then we also look at this so-called local configuration meaning like this just actually it's quite similar to the uh, physical process the only difference is that now the detection still there is a spin injection from fgt to molybdenum dielectric but now there's no spin diffusion within a molybdenum dielectric the injected spin color will immediately be detected through uh of course inverse spin hole effect and uh, by measuring the voltage between these two probes and of course but if you look at the data actually it looks quite similar the only difference is the magnitude now you can see that the switching the resistance difference actually is quite remarkable can up to a few ohm in our case this can be 2.5 actually in our, uh, if we change the dimension the largest value we can achieve is close to 10 ohm which is at least uh, one order higher than current state of art of course uh, the, again the reason for this improvement is similar uh, because of the unique spin hole material we use because of the wonderworks interface in our design so uh, I guess now I can briefly conclude my talk like this. So first, uh, the symmetric plating can be a very uh, useful uh, knob or degree of freedom to manipulate the spin hole effect or the spin optical coupling in uh, 2D materials. As I just mentioned, actually now even for the spin hole effect in molybdenum dielectric, we still believe there's much more for us to understand. Uh, and also to explore. And the second is that a uh, result of those 2D fellow magnetisms can be largely enhanced due to the uh, one to one interface if we use fully a uh, 2D header structure and also if we find a suitable spin hole effect materials. Of course, a uh, lot like many beyond heavy metal, the traditional heavy metal. Uh, the implication I would say is that uh, for 2D fellow magnetisms, it is interesting uh, for application because of uh, one of the main reasons is because of the it is uh, scalability for some memory and logical application down to very small size. Although, of course, nowadays uh, we are far from that uh, point, but still, the, I believe the promise is still there. So, I guess. I mean, now good to conclude my talk. So uh, feel free to ask any question or comments. Yeah, so. Thank you, Professor Song. Uh, so there's a question. Uh, yes. At which temperature are you operating? Does your second magnetism survive going to room temperature? Uh, yes, as I mentioned here, now we, all our measurements were down uh, below 200K, but this is only limited by the TC of this uh, FGT ion germanium telluride itself. If we can find, actually now, or there are already some uh, quite 
robust room temperature to the ferromagnet. Then with those kind of material, we can for sure have no problem to go to room temperature. Thank you. So uh, I have a question, uh, Professor yes. Song. Is there any material with room temperature, uh, you know, transition to the materials with good uh, uh, effect? I guess no, it's just uh, chromium pyrite. It can be about uh, room temperature, but of course, at certain composition, which I don't remember quite well. But chromium pyrite, these two elements can be fellow magnetic metal with TC about room temperature. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, actually, uh, regarding the previous question, uh, Jan yeah. myself did not understand what you said. Uh, could you please repeat your answer, Professor? Like he's asking if you can go beyond room temperature with your material. Uh, yes, we can. For, uh, for the, uh, let me put in this way now. Okay, first now in our measurement, we didn't go to room temperature below 200K. Uh, we did the reason we cannot go to room temperature is that the TC of FGT is about 200K, meaning uh, if we go above 200K, of course, then it become paramagnetic. Then of course, then we cannot, uh, there's no point to, uh, to do this kind of circuit detection. And of course, it will not give any signal. Uh, but let's say if we change this FGT to the chromium pyrite I just mentioned, still we do, we, the only change is that we change this the material FGT to chromium telluride. Still, we use the polydium dithelluride as spin hole material. Then we can repeat or reproduce all the results at room temperature. Because the spin hole effect of molybdenum dithelluride, it can go above room temperature. So, is this clear? Yes, I guess. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Uh, I think now it's now now it's clear. So you just need the right material, and if, you're, if yes. you have one, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was just wondering if, if your two D magnetism breaks down if you try to go to to high enough temperature because it's two D only. Yeah. So okay. Um, if we have time, maybe I can ask another question also. Yeah, sure. Because I, I I like this idea by Max Hirschberger that if you go beyond critical temperature in some materials because of the non-trivial atomic lattice, you can still have transport effects like um, the Hall effect above TC in, in, in the magnetically disordered phase. Do you think something similar might also work here in your case, maybe? So if you take a, take a material mm -hmm. that has a non-trivial um, well, not topology, but non trivial number of minimal loops inside the mm. atomic unit cell. If something like mm -hmm. this could also work in your case. Mm. I, uh, okay, my understanding is that yes, it will, mm, that will depend on the, uh, so what the structure you mentioned, how it can be. Uh, used to generate spin color because eventually we still need to uh, rely on the spin injection from the magnetic material to the spin hole material. Uh, of course, in one case, the case you just mentioned is some kind of uh, a special structure in the magnetic material, but if that can be used to generate spin color, uh, I guess that would be case by case. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any other questions from participants? You can post in the chat box or raise your hands so that I can mute you. Okay, I, I do have another question, Professor Song. Yes, uh, yes, so, please, differently yes, uh, in 2D uh, materials with uh, transition temperature below room temperature. So what is yes. to what extent can we uh, realize uh, some real-time applications in that uh, materials, that sort of materials? So you mean with TC below room temperature? Yes. 
Well, of course, if you really talking about some real application, for sure they are going nowhere. Uh, nowadays, application the uh, memory logic application, of course, uh, first of every requirement, it has to be room temperature operation. Uh, but I guess for us, it's still important at this point of time, important to explore those behavior at low, low temperature. And also, let's say this, uh, uh, discuss or investigate the scalability of those new materials, even though it's at low, low temperature. Uh, I think still meaningful to do this, although uh, those uh, material with TC below uh, room temperature, they are not likely to be really useful. Let's put it in this way. Uh, this is my, my opinion. Okay. Thank you. So are there any other questions from participants? All right then. Thank you, Professor Song. Yeah, sure. That was a very no interesting problem. talk. Thank you for discussing your results and giving a nice description on our spin hall effect. Thank you.